Now that I have it right where I want it, and I have it pulled out straight, I tend to bring it to my body and kind of hold the top with my chest as I reach down here, roll it over, so there's one fold, and then flip it up again. I'll do that on another bag to show you. While I have it held right there, I'm going to take some masking tape, fuzzy, and uh, kind of use the tape to pin it, then pull back and tuck any of the filler that's sticking out, and also you kind of want to tuck in the, the bottom layer of the plastic there, because you don't want the you don't want the tape to actually hold the, the layers of plastic together, you just want to hold the plastic down to the bag. Cut it off, and one bag is ready. Alright, we'll do that again. Again, we're going to straighten the top. Make sure the grain is nice and boxed and flat. Filter is away from you. Get the gusset folds in right. You see here I have a little bit of a uh, bunching I gotta fix. Take another piece of uh, Tyvek. Now you can use any size piece as long as it's doubled up like a sleeve and it's wide enough that it goes and spans past this little interior open area that you see. Now also we're leaving a tail end off out of the bag so that we can grab and pull it out. So you see I'm gonna fold it over, I'm gonna pin it so the first fold actually ends up right here. So this folds over like that, hold it, fold it over again you want to make sure that the top fold is longer than the bottom too. You don't want that under it. It's just easier that way. And then we'll take our tape again. And there we are. Now I like to set one bag on top of another bag, only too high. And this way it'll press some of this excess air out, you see. And that's going to go out when we pressure cook it anyhow, but the less air that's in there initially, the better the seal is going to be in the end. Now also, if you don't want to use a Tyvek suit, you see here I just have some Tyvek mailing envelope that I've just cut and folded over. And uh, usually you know it's kind of stiff to begin with, but I've used it so many times it's almost as pliable as the sleeve. And you do the same thing with it. Just uh, same folds and all that. I don't see this one's getting a little tricky. I'm telling you, you're going to be frustrated doing this at the start. It takes a little bit of finesse. And the Tyvex, you know, the same. You as long as you always want to make sure that your your double up is like this or like this. You don't want it to seal off the air coming in. We'll do the same thing. Make sure at least one corner is out. Alright, I'm going to do this for the rest of these bags. And then we'll I'll show you how to load them into a pressure cooker. I've bagged up all the grain. Now it's time to load it into our two pressure cookers. You can see they're the largest model you can commercially buy for uh, something that will put on or uh, sit on top of your stove. And you can see I can barely just get two of them on mine. I actually have to slide this one over a little bit so this one isn't teetering. So what we're going to do first is take an old scrubber, you know, scotch bright pad or whatever, non-abrasive, 
and we're gonna, you know, take off the any old uh, gummed up lubricant we're using because on these pressure cookers it's a metal to metal seal which means there's no rubber gasket involved and you have to keep it clean and lubricated so that it seals properly and doesn't get damaged and you can use a variety of different uh, stuff to lubricate it I use chapstick because you can easily apply it but you can use any water-based or oil-based just as long as you uh, wipe off any excess in between runs then take your finger and smooth it out I think it's better to use the thicker kind of uh, stuff even like hand lotion works if you're in a pinch all right now you see I've stacked all these bags one on top of another like I said before it's gonna squeeze the air out of the bottom one so the bags that go into the bottom we want to get the air squeezed out too so we're gonna use the ones on the top that well actually you know we're gonna load up some water first that's a that's a big thing in it so we're gonna use a quart jar and each one of these pressure cookers is going to receive three and one half quarts of water And you can put it in at lukewarm. Just don't put it in in real hot because uh, your bags might have cooled off a little bit. You want to kind of start everything off cooler so it comes up more evenly in temperature. Now, if you're using a different size pressure cooker, obviously you're not going to be putting that much in it. But a good rule of thumb is about uh, seven eighths of an inch of water. All right, we'll fill up the other. Really forgetting to put enough water in your pressure cooker is the biggest mistake you can possibly make in all this business because you will destroy your pressure cooker if it doesn't have water in it. It'll melt. All right, as you can see, both have adequate water. We're gonna start putting our bags in. Now here I have a whole bunch of older pieces of thick uh, heavy duty foil they're actually kind of ate up now you can see that some are in better shape than others and the longer you use them the more the heat and pressure will break down the aluminum so we're gonna use those to separate the bags because the bags have a tendency to stick together real bad when they heat up and are pressed hard So just using the sheets of foil will uh, prevent any of that happening. And you only have to put it where the bag is going to touch the bag. You don't have to put any on the border between the bag and the uh, pressure cooker because even though it's hot, it's still not going to be hot enough to do any damage to it. These are specially made for going into a pressure cooker and surviving. See that third one, you're going to have to and see how I use my hand as a guide to slide it in there. 
you want to kind of flatten out the first layer of bags and see anywhere that the uh, the opening of the bag is kinked up, flatten it out. You can use the foil to pin it down. Then we're going to use some of these rattier pieces of foil to uh, divide the bottom row from the top row. That'll be adequate. And now I usually kind of stagger the bags. You can see the the border between the uh, two of them on the bottom row is right here. So I'm going to set it right on the top. So this one's actually sitting on two bags. And that helps in letting some of the air escape because if you put it right on top, it's kind of uh, put a whole bunch of weight and just cut it off completely. At least too much weight for being on the bottom. And we'll use the bags that were underneath those on the top. Alright, last one. Now if you get to your last one and you notice that everything is really uneven, like you got one way down here low and these two high, go ahead and rearrange them so that you can get the top of it as uh, level as possible. Because, as what we're going to do next. We're going to take a 14 inch pie, or a pizza pie pan. You see it's just a simple uh, pizza pan. We're going to flip it upside down and so the inverted parts on the inside and you can see we still have a little bit of space around for steam to go but this is going to uh, flatten everything out on top and we're going to put a 10 pound weightlifting weight right in the center of that. Now see that even though it's not perfectly level the, since the weight's a little bit rusty and, and whatnot, it'll stay there in place while it cooks. And then we can put our lid on. You see how I have these lids while they're off of the cooker, just sitting on the five on a five-gallon bucket. You never want to put the lid on the floor or even really on the counter because if you get anything like a, it's like you say, you set, accidentally set it on a steel spoon or something, you're gonna nick the uh, inside rim. And that'll eventually cause you problems. So we're gonna put it there. You can see this style of pressure cooker has an arrow and then a slot. Let's you know that's lined up. And I've just kind of pushed it in and twisted it to it. And you see uh, pressure cookers have a lot of safety feature features. They have uh, these little clamps right here so that there's no way they could pull straight up. We have over here a safety release valve. This will pop if the pressure gets too high. And we have plenty of these uh, kind of like drum locks. Like you see how like on drum equipment where you're going to take opposite sides initially and you're just going to lightly tighten them down so they're in place. And you want to make sure that the, the gap is somewhat even on both sides. You don't want to uh, you know, pinch real close here and open on the other side. You want to try to keep things level. So I'm going to lock these up. And then when you get the last one, you want to really crank them down. About as, about as hard as you can possibly do with by hand. And then keep track of where you're going. I usually go clockwise. Crank down the next ones. And from there on. All right. Now, these style pressure cookers also use a pressure weight. You can see that it has three values, 5, 10, 15. We want the 15 because that's 15 PSI. We have our gauge. Now, these gauges of mine are a bit old.